Another season is in the books. 1904 is complete, and the Cleveland Naps are champions again. In 1903, the Cleveland Naps also won the first World Series. There was no World Series, however, in 1904, so it will be blank again. First thing we'll do is take a look at the manager's office. My goals, all completed, thanks to Terry Turner's arrival at shortstop. Career record has gone up. No playoff appearance, no championship will be added here, but they did win 1904 with the standings right here. And the Cleveland Naps winners again. Take a look at the achievements. Had a perfect game thrown by Otto Hess, September 28th. A couple other huge achievements. High def inning, Hero Moore, four strikeouts. 23 games in a row with a quality start for Bill Bernard. Earl Moore had a really, really good performance. Harry Bay went 8 for 9 in an extra inning game. A no-hitter was thrown. I don't know where that one is, though. Right here, domination. Bill Bernard threw a no-hitter in 1904. I didn't mention this last year in the World Series. Elmer Flick stole home. I forgot to mention it because it wasn't in the highlight video for some reason. But he did steal home, so I have a stolen base of home. Uh, Knapp won the batting champion again, so it was a good year for achievements. Very good year. Go to the homepage here. Honus Wagner, 371 average, leading the way. Knapp in second. Tommy Leach leading the way with home runs, 10. Knapp with runs better than a huge lead over Sam Mertis there. Dan McGann stealing 47 bases, and Honus Wagner with a ridiculous win above replacement rating here, 12.7. So Honus Wagner really stepped it up this year. Uh, but the uh, champion was based on the amount of wins total. And this year, it happened to be the Cleveland Naps. Win Kellum with a 129 ERA, shutting him down. 31 wins for Christy Mathewson, 369 strikeouts for Rue Waddell. He just continues to mow down batter after batter. Saves don't really matter. They're very random because you really want your pitcher to go the whole way. So having a save means that your pitcher couldn't make it the whole way, which is not a great thing in 1904. Rube Waddell with a great war. Rube Waddell with a great FIP. Jack Chesbro leading the way in innings pitched. You got your team statistics down here. Keep that on the page just for a second. We'll go over those one by one. Any milestones that were hit. See, these are all that. These The ones that are already hit won't be here. Go into the standings page, take a look at the regular season standings there. Now that the season is over, the Giants made a huge push at the end to get us. But the Cleveland Naps, hold on, win again. This was not a, uh, I didn't, I, went, I moved pretty fast through the season, and I didn't uh, take it as serious as 1903 because there's no World Series. So it kind of just wanted to move fast through it and quickly go over what's happened here, go over page by page. Got some batting leaders. Last year, I think I went over all of these players, and then when I got here, I was like, wow, I should probably never do that again, because it just took forever. So they're right here, all the batting leaders, all the pitching leaders, right here. If you need to pause it, we can pause it. If I ever watch these back again, I might pause it and at the at this page. And just kind of glance over it. If I do, if I don't, then I don't. Hot and cold hitters. Uh, kind of more of a, a recent video. Something you'd want to watch on my stream. Then at the year end. Streaks should be here though. Streaks should be good. Because the active streaks should be noted by an asterisk. Asterisk. Projected batting. Don't need that. Fielding litters though. We'll definitely take a look at the best fielders in the game. Got them right there. Take a look at the team statistics, team batting, Cleveland leading the way, 260, yeah, they did lead the way in average, but I don't know what this is based on, there's got to be sorted some, I don't know what it's sorted on, so, it's interesting, 
Maybe it's sorted by like wins. The standings. Cleveland's ERA, 218. The pitching was just really, really good this year. Fielding wasn't bad either. Zone rating, plus 17. Sure, it wasn't like Chicago's, though. Plus 47. Jeez. Plus 73. These are some incredible zone ratings. All right, where's that running percent? I want to see the base running percentage. I don't know. It's on a different page. We'll find it later. There's a historical simulation accuracy for 1903. It's pretty close to that. It's kind of close. The largest difference is 5 compared to like 13. So it's pretty close. Take a look at the yearly transactions. There's your opening day stuff. Fantastic. Just a lot going on throughout the whole year with the historical stuff. Historical transactions on. There's a lot to take in. And I move through the season so fast that it's, I hardly ever stop and take a look at how much is actually going on in the, uh, in the background. But there were a lot of injuries in 1904 even. So baseball has always been consistently a pretty injured list type sport. So there's all your transactions. Go to the prospect pa pipeline. We did last time, I think, so we might as well just take a look at the guys here. Otto Hess. Mike Donovan. Oh, boy. Claude Rossman. So there's some guys there. League reports. Here we go. Let's look at some reports. Honus and Knapp. Team versus team. See how the Naps did versus everybody. Again, pretty dominant. It looks like the Highlanders got us best. New York. Top performances of the year. Honus Wagner, 5 for 5. 4 RBIs, 96 score. Great job. And then Earl Moore's perfect game, right? Oh, no, it wasn't even his perfect game? Wait. Where's Otto Hess's perfect game? How is Otto Hess's perfect game a 95? When Earl Moore did strike out 14 in 12 innings and give up no runs and two hits, sure. But that's incredible. Someone can throw a perfect game and only have the ninth best pitching performance? Okay. Sorry about that, Otto Hess. You suck. That's kind of funny, though. I did not expect the perfect game to be ninth. Where was, wait, hold on. Where's Bill Bernard's? Bill Bernard threw a no-hitter, 89, 19th. But maybe it's just because, like, luck. I had to have gotten lucky. More than dominant. Because the ball hit to the right person, no errors. Like, there's stuff going on here. All right, so I think I looked at the positional strength of position. I'm not going to do that this time. We'll just look at the top systems, see where we are. This is just like the rookies and the guys that are younger. Um, batting report, here you go. Yeah, it must be sorted by win-loss then. That makes more sense because that order didn't make any sense other than... Uh, we didn't steal at all, so the Cleveland Naps... I'm using a more, like current strategy and I'm not really giving up runs I'm letting my guys hit and especially since my guys there was a lot of like power in the middle of my lineup so I found myself getting caught stealing a lot and running myself out of innings so I kind of stopped stealing as much and only stealing in like certain situations and I think it's working although we aren't stealing as much so that kind of is a bummer 13 shutouts for 142 complete games for the Naps. And that's the most complete games out of everybody. So I definitely push the pitchers. That's just interesting. I take it to the next level. 
So there's the pitching stats. We've got fielding report. There we go. That's injuries. Not going to worry about that. Schedule grid does not look great. Team power rankings. Here we go. The Giants pass us at the end because of a great September. Cleveland, uh, we had a great rest of the year. September wasn't that good, so we kind of just coasted to the championship uh, win-loss record. Some batting prospects, pitching prospects. We already looked at those, though. And then position strength in teams is what I would look at really quick. Just for the naps. Jim Jackson. Not sure who Jim Jackson is. Not sure who Jim Jackson is. All right, so that goes... There goes all the league reports. Let's take a look and see if there's anything else you want to look at here. Uh, the logs. Already did transactions. League history. We can look at that one more time. Like right here. I'll just put this page up. And then what I'll do is I'll go into... The Naps. Here are the Naps. Snap, Lajoie, Elmer Flick, Harry Bay. Charlie Hickman not on our team anymore. They traded him to Detroit for Charlie Carr. A horrible trade, so it's probably going to foreshadow a bunch of great moves. Sarcasm. In the future that the uh, Cleveland Indians will make. Losing someone like Charlie Hickman, who 70 contact and 80 power, and then the replacement's like 50 and 45. Here the uh, pitching really stepped up. I mean, almost three guys under two. Bill Bernard, really, the horse of the rotation. Uh, it was pretty easy, manageable. We were pretty ahead the entire season as soon as July got here, so it was just kind of coasting, which was, which was nice. It really was nice. All right, so where is our statistics? So I'll go into the team reports then. Here's our team report. Looks good. Batting stats. Sorted by at bats here. Pitching stats. Great pitching overall. Looked like Eddie Joss is the worst pitcher, and he wasn't that bad. Six war. So, fielding here. And there should be a little bit more news. It's right here. This is where I wanted to look at the base running, which is fifth in AL, so plus point oh nine. Almost one. But yeah, September twenty eleven and then October was bad, five and six. I lumped October into September though. And no retired numbers, of course, yet. There we go. So that's the naps. Now what I'll do is quickly go through uh, each team's home screen really quick. I wonder if I can click on it like that. Perfect. We can click on it that way. That's great. Sox Seabold, a staple with Rube Waddell. We beat Rube Waddell a few times, but man, he strikes out a lot of people. And the Highlanders finished third. They came up and wins this year. A couple, the first couple years I played the simulation, they uh, were struggling, and they're starting to come around here. And Detroit finishing fourth. Now I have Charlie Hickman instead of Charlie Carr. I'm going to remember that trade for a long time. Goodbye, Charlie Hickman. You see the White Sox next, finishing 75 and 79. Uh, just so, just so we all know here, uh, in 
real life, Boston finished 95 and 59, Highlanders 92 and 59, White Sox 89 and 65, Naps 86 and 65, Athletics 81 and 70, Browns 65 and 87, Detroit 62 and 90, and Washington 38 and 113. So they had a bit of a, bit of a discrepancy with the win loss records compared to real life. There were a bunch of differences, including Cleveland Naps winning. 15 more games than expected. Boston again, losing 25 more games than expected. So it seems to be a trend here with Boston doing bad and Cleveland picking up the ground. And the Browns. The Browns pitching got a lot better this year, but uh, just that hitting. They don't. I don't think they had enough pop in their lineup to really make a dent. Then you see the Senators, who did actually really well compared to their real life, but that's because they got off to a huge start. They were like 10, 10 games over their expected win losses. When I, when I say expected, I mean that's what their real one was. So their real win loss record was like they started off one in fifteen or something, and in this game they did not start off one in fifteen. They started winning every other game, so they were able to curb their slow start in this game. They made it happen. And then we'll take a look at the New York Giants. They got really good. Christy Mathewson's getting really good here. He's kind of young, so he'll be yeah, 24 years old. Nap Lajoie is 30. So Nap's going to be Asian here a little bit. There's the Giants. Here's the Reds. The Pirates finishing in third with Honus Wagner leading the way. And then the Cubs. And I'll do the same thing I did with the uh, real standings. The Giants 106 and 47. The Cubs 93 and 60. Reds 88 and 65. Pirates 87 and 66. Cardinals 75 and 79. The Super Boss 56 and 97. Bean Eaters 55 and 98. And the Phillies 52 and 100. So the Phillies uh, finished pretty good in this simulation compared to real life there. But the Roy Thomas was hitting a lot better last year. Hit 100 points better almost one year later. So he must have got uh, lucky with the bip babip. You got the super boss here. The future Dodgers. But yeah, it's cool to see this thing progress. I'm interested to see what happens in 1905 with the World Series coming back. Uh, the Naps did not do as good in 1905, so I do not have high expectations. It's going to be really hard to make it to the World Series. Uh, but when we did it in 1903, but I'm not sure it's going to be necessarily possible. We'll try our best. Uh, I'll try to get as many wins as I can, but... Considering that they finished middle of the road, it's going to be a little bit difficult, I would think. So let's go back to the Cleveland Naps. That should about wrap this up. I don't think there's anything else I really want to touch on. I'm going to start making these a little bit shorter. So this was about 20 minutes instead of the 30 minutes. It's just they kind of went on too long in the past. These just need to be short wrap-up videos. All the information I have access to, so if anyone ever has any questions, feel free to leave a comment, and I can answer anything you guys want. Like, if you have a specific player, you want to know their average. Uh, how did they do in 1903 for their teams? I could, I could definitely send you some info. Anything like that that uh, I don't cover in this, which is mostly everything, but anything that uh, you guys have questions on, feel free to ask. And uh, if you want to watch live action, we'll be doing it on twitch.tv slash MrPost. It will be an awesome 1905 season. Uh, today, it is currently May 27th. I don't know when this video is going to be posted, but the plan is in a few hours to start up 1905 and to get busy. So I hope to see you guys there. And until next time. Naps win again. Go Naps. Naps win and Naps win. Take it easy and thanks for watching.